archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. Hello viewers, in today's episode of Mind Watch, let us explore a complex human emotion, fear. What happens to you when you suddenly see a dark place? or a life-threatening situation. Any one of us would feel fearful in such a situation. And this is correct because it propels us towards action. But are you more fearful than others? Do you suddenly freeze when you are faced with a situation? Do you know somebody who cannot face a situation while others can face that situation very, very easily? What happens to those who are phobic or are avoiding certain situations? Let us explore when fear turns into a phobia. Some jump into troubled waters while others get phobic at the sight of it. Some fear the clouds while others fly over it. Some are terrified to cross even a road while others wade through crowds. Some are phobic of innocuous situations, fear showing through their eyes. So well, you know now that everybody has fears and some degree of fear is perfectly normal but when it goes beyond a certain degree it's abnormal and that's when it's called a phobia do you want to know if I have any phobias? yes I do phobia is a common psychiatric disorder in which the person has a irrational fear of a situation which is otherwise innocuous which in no way puts him in danger uh, to give you an example, if somebody is suddenly confronted by a tiger, then he has every reason to be afraid. But if suddenly somebody sees a mice or a rat or a rabbit and gets afraid, then that's a situation we call as phobia. In psychiatry, we tend to classify phobias in three distinct ways. One is what we call as simple phobias, which are phobias, irrational fears of innocuous objects like lightning, thunder, horses and things of that nature. The second type of phobia is a situational phobia in which there is a specific situation in which the person becomes frightened. And third is a social phobia in which the person gets very much afraid, anxious in social situations, social interactions. One of the commonest type of phobias is agoraphobia or a fear of going into open spaces. It is a complex group of phobias where the person is not able to go out alone, go out into the street or any open place. As soon as the person goes out, he experiences different types of anxieties, psychic as well as somatic. The person may feel faintness, giddiness, choking sensation, trembling of the heart, trembling of the hands and very high beating of the heart. What is worse, is that this can come on at any point of time and in any situation and it comes out normally as a bolt out of the blue. The heart beats very fast. I become extremely restless. Earlier blood pressure was low. Now it is high. That is why I came here. There is a burning sensation in my body. I sweat a lot. My hands become stiff and a tingling sensation is there. I have giddiness. When I go out, I feel more anxious. Jamila has become a prisoner of her own fears, afraid to go out and restless while staying in. There are many types of phobias and one of the commoner one is what is called as a claustrophobia. A lot of people have fear of being in a dark place or being in a single room or being in a room without any windows. A lot of people may not be go out into a situation where there are a lot of crowds like supermarkets, crowded buses or a crowded train. And as soon as they enter into the situation, they start trembling or showing signs of anxiety. And it normally starts with being in a close place like a lift. And once it develops, they dread being into the same place and subsequently the phobia continues to develop. Remember the last time you were caught in a lift or a closed space? It can produce anxiety in anyone, but we get over it after some time. In some people, it may develop into abnormal anxiety, 
or avoidance of the situation. This is when it turns into a phobia. This is very common in dark or closed spaces. Anxiety experienced leads to avoidance, leading to anxiety even in imagination. It sets off a chain reaction that the person finds difficult to break out of. There are situational phobias where the person is completely normal otherwise, but as soon as he enters into a situation, the phobic symptoms or anxiety starts. So there might be people who have fear of flying, fear of heights, fear of color, especially the red one, and fear of water. Sea beach is a place to enjoy for most, except this person who has to be dragged towards it. Flying may have advantages, except for those having flying phobia. Sometimes, excessive concern generated over a problem may produce heightened fear in a few, including phobia of illnesses. Why did you bring the hospital here? Because of plague, I consulted a few private doctors and got my blood tested. I was told that I did not have plague, but I did not believe. I consulted a big hospital. Then I came here. Doctors say that you don't have plague. You are just frightened. Because of this fear, I did not go for my work also. I would worry throughout the day that I have got the plague. Her son returned from Surat. She was scared that she also had plague. She would not allow her children also to come near her. She would say, I am ill. Everybody said that there is no problem. Then someone told her to come here and get admitted. So we came here. Doctors say that there is nothing wrong with her. She is just scared. What our patient here is having is a common fear that a lot of people suffer from when they hear about spread of diseases like the currently occurred plague. People assume that they have the disease and they start getting worried about it. They know little about the disease, but whatever symptoms they have, they just take it to be the symptoms of that same disease. They come to us for treatment, they go to a lot of other doctors, get a lot of investigations, blood and urine tested, x-rays done. Some people even go for expensive investigations. It all amounts to only spending money and not getting any benefit. What these commonly aroused fears are, are basically psychiatric illnesses. They are fears or what other people call as phobias of illnesses. A lot of people have phobia of death, a phobia of going crazy and of contracting a serious kind of an illness. So there might be people who feel that they may develop cancer or AIDS or plague, but actually it's all in their mind and they do not have an illness, but just a phobia of having developed or likely to develop any of these illnesses. Here's Mrs. Thapar, who has developed a fear of death and illness. Phobia had marnega. I have a phobia of dying. I have feelings of insecurity because my husband is no more. If something happens to me suddenly, Who will look after my children? This is what worries me. I do not have any serious physical illness, but I'm sure I'll die of some disease. This is my constant fear. Most people are scared of lizards, snakes and crocodile to the extent that people do not think that this is abnormal. But do you know that lizards are harmless and most snakes are non-poisonous. A person, depending on the person's viewpoint, may make actually a profession 
out of a life threatening situation signifying it's all in the mind we met the director of the crocodile bank who faces dangerous situations fearlessly it's a very well known adage that people are usually fear of what they're ignorant of and frankly i have not had very much experience in riding horses for example so that's a animal which i don't readily jump up on and ride around on because i'm a little frightened of it okay but i would uh, have no hesitation in jumping in this pit with uh, 2000 crocodiles because i know how to manage them i know about them i know that they won't attack me and uh, i don't jump into the pit where the 15 foot long crocodile is in because i know that he would attack me so it's just rather simple once you get to know them they become an animal which you can get along with and become very interested in largely because they haven't had exposure to reptiles so basically people should become familiar with them social phobia is a very common form of phobia it is there in all of us to different degrees it is a fear of going and meeting people especially large gatherings it is a type of phobia in which the person gets anxious in social interaction he gets anxious of meeting people particularly strangers he gets anxious of stressful situations like examination or interviews now that is your social phobia we have a person here who knows that she had a problem wants to talk about it but does not want to show her identity what was the fear that you had when you came right in the beginning i used to feel depressed and um scared of people and feel that people are uh, staring at me and uh, i didn't know the reason why they used to stare at me and um i was scared to go out on my own and meet people I always used to be at home and i was i had fear of meeting people can you imagine that a lot of people who had social phobia subsequently overcome and become famous big celebrities personalities in the world of showbiz who are supposed to be very free with the audience to have their moments of stage fright fortunately for me i got over my stage fright at a very young age but it was pretty bad and my experience became physical i was in front of an audience i lost my voice i went red in the face i started hyperventilating i couldn't breathe i felt severely humiliated and i vowed to myself that i'd never be scared coming before public again and that's what happened So now I can sing, dance, talk before uh, any amount of people and nothing happens to me. I'm totally relaxed and comfortable. A phobia lurks in every fear expressed by the child. Normally most children are able to get over these fears and as they grow up they may be able to outgrow them. The commonest fears that children experience are fear of water, strange people, dark places, animals or ghosts. these can develop while a child reads a comic or watches it on television the innocent tranquil world of children may sometimes be tarnished by fear of ghosts or fear of scary surroundings these makes them miserable the fears are at times learned from elders or may develop after a bad experience once developed it may continue to perpetuate but the child can be gently helped along talked over explained reassured and once this is done by the parents or teachers most children are able to get out of their fears or phobias disabling phobias are there in about 2 to 3% of the population that is about 25 to 30 million people in our country other people may have one phobia or another because of which they may have some difficulty but it does not interfere in their day to day functioning what is important to realize is that each phobia develops in a unique way phobia uh, can be developed in a traumatic situations whenever any situation is threatening and person finds himself in that situation that situation uh, gets connected with uh, fear giving emotions and these uh, fears may continue for a pretty long time on the basis of a principle known as conditioning avoidance response it means person tries to avoid uh, fearful object 
instead of facing the fearful situation, he tries to avoid it. Phobias are amongst the most easily treatable of all psychological problems. In the early phases, it may be treated unaided just with the help of a friend or a family member. Subsequently, if the anxiety is very, very severe, medication may be required, but only for a short period of time just to get over the crisis. Drug therapy, if at all, plays a very, very minimum role in the treatment of phobic disorders. Only when phobia occurs in combination with panic attacks. For example, when a person goes out and suddenly experiences intense panic, the next time he visits the same place, he would like to avoid because he feels that he will have a similar kind of an attack. In such a kind of instance, it will be helpful for him to have the benefit of a pharmacological treatment. The most lasting effects of treatment are derived by what we call as psychotherapy, particularly of the behavior type, where we try and modify the behavior of the person. And the simple principle that we use is that we try and expose the person to the feared situation in a graduated manner so that he masters his anxiety as he approaches the situation more intensely. To take out all this anxiety, fear and phobias, we have methods of desensitization of various type. The person is sensitive to the situation, the person is sensitive to the event, the person is sensitive to the thought that he is having regarding the fearful situation. We desensitize them. Now, this is a form of relaxation that I am going to conduct. Keep your body completely loose and light. Close your eyes. Direct your attention onto the sensations from within your body. Be calm and relaxed. Whenever a person with a phobia has to go out into a situation of which he or she is phobic, intense anxiety may develop and this can take on the form of what is called as a panic attack. The panic attack may occur even when the person has no phobia. It starts with physical symptoms and builds up into extreme anxiety, especially about one's heart. This drastic event leaves the individual and others around extremely anxious, fearing that the worst may happen. Panic attack usually occurs out of the blue. Usually a person does not have any warning that he is going to get sick. Suddenly starts as a feeling of acute anxiety, an acute fear that something is going wrong with him. He's, there may be various bodily symptoms like the heart starts beating violently, trembling of the hands, dry mouth, and various other aspects which gives him a feeling that his, usually that his heart is failing or some very severe illness in relation to his own existence. These symptoms may last only few seconds to few minutes, after which the patient may recover completely and is normal. There is a tendency for this attack to re again. The patient has all the knowledge, all he remembers well what had happened during the episode. These symptoms can be easily mistaken by the patient or by his relatives as an acute heart attack. Patient usually comes up into casualty with this acute attack and then he is investigated. They check through and find that there is nothing on investigation. Nevertheless, it's a very real experience for the uh, person who is suffering, who thinks that his life is coming to an end. Now I am having the pain sometimes in near the heart and I am not likely to uh, properly to talk because my tongue has become heavy and this eyesight is also not working properly. I am, when I am looking by this eye, so it looks like two, two persons or two, two things, everything. This is my husband. He was all right at the time of our marriage. For the last six years, he has been having extreme restlessness. He would say that he is going away. Then he would suddenly go to VT station. 
and I would keep looking out for him. We all deal with stress in different ways. Sometimes if we are not able to deal with a stressful situation, it could lead to a panic attack. Sometimes a situation in the past which has not been handled very well may be relived in the mind leading to a panic attack. A lot of times people start feeling anxious about anxiety itself and before an attack comes they may start becoming anxious making themselves panicky. However, the recent indicators are that this is a biological situation occurring from within their own, by their own chemicals inside their brain which may be triggering off these attacks. Once the attack triggers off, there are very definite biological parameters which occur, which change and give rise to more and more symptoms. Any episode of panic must be managed medically, which means a good history followed by necessary investigations and if they are negative, then no more investigations but reassurance. A lot of times course of medication may be required to help the person get over the crisis. The treatment of panic attack mainly consists of identifying the situations or the underlying causes which have resulted in panic attack and then treating the patient properly, adequately and by the proper professional. The patient should be ideally referred to mental health professionals and patient should be given either medication or a type of psychotherapy. Once the crisis has been gotten over, then the family can be taught how to help the person in stressful situations. And as time goes by and a person has learned to relax, medicines can be gradually reduced and the person can be taught how to deal with anxiety without getting the panic attacks. I think it's just a mental block and I, I do have help from my family, my friends, who say that it's possible for anybody to do it, so can you. And that's what I want to tell anyone there who has a phobia, that it's possible for you to get over it. And you can go for help to just about anybody who makes you feel better, who, who makes you get over it, whether it is medical or non-medical. The first thing to do about your phobias and fears is to accept them. There are many ways of getting rid of your phobias. You can take the help of a friend or a professional. The most important thing is to nip them in the bud. So fear no more, conquer your phobias and remain fearless for life. Silent in your tears, wasted in your years. When you cry, you cry alone. With insanity, another night beside the throne. Close your mind, feel the pain, seek your meaning by my watch. the war within addictions in the bin curl up with your memories togetherness and harmony